Welcome back everyone. Thanks a lot for coming back. <clears throat> thanks as always to the subscribers and uh, thanks for thanks for watching if you found this through a search. Uh, I'm trying to add a lot of good search um, uh, terms so uh, this pops up. I've been reading a little bit on how to get uh, traffic to your YouTube videos and stuff like that so I try and throw as many search terms. Search terms that are relevant of course to the videos. So um, kind of a small video this week um, between the Easter holiday and uh, my kids are off from school this week uh, so we've been uh, rebuilding Lego sets they have well, I couldn't even imagine how many Lego pieces they have and uh, we have undertaken trying to put together sets um, again so that 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 is a it's a fun process love Legos even though I'm you know an adult now still love putting Lego sets together so now I have an excuse that the kids are the reason we're putting them together whatever um, but I thought I would go through uh, I was going to tack on to the end of the last video just a little static grass um, a tidbit if you've got a static grass applicator um, that uh, you know either the knock brand or one of the more inexpensive uh, bug zapper styles this is a just an alternate uh, method to get little tufts of, of grass. Um, Silphor sells, you know, little small little tufts that you can put into a field with, um, you know, clump foliage and um, <clears throat> ground foam, and it looks just like a, you know, a sprig of, of taller field grass. Um, but um, this is just a method to make those. So, and then I thought uh, I, I I've been working on a kit actually. Uh, kit that I showed in a previous video. Uh, it's a Lifelike Proto 2000 Rock Island. Um, what does this say? 4427 PS2 CD covered hopper. Um, it's uh, it, it, I, I like these kits. They're they're a lot of fun to build. They are a little bit tedious, unfortunately, though. Um, and uh, looking at this one, I think I'm actually going to turn this into. Um, just uh, I don't want to say a showpiece because it's you know it's it's just a, a car, but I might actually take this one to work with me and and pop this one on my desk um, just to have something at work because um, it's it's not really going to fit my era. After I looked at it, um, I could relabel it. It's just such a nice kit. I hate to black these letters out and and then try and make a you know. A, a patched out version of this car so I'm gonna just do this up nice and and then like I said maybe have it as a showpiece so that's what I've been working on and uh, I haven't really there's not a whole lot of exciting stuff to watch on this so it'd be kind of a dull video to, to watch me put together a kit you know so um, otherwise I, I haven't had a chance the good news is I have uh, decided to go ahead with the layout expansion um, and uh, why don't we flip over to to that and I'll just give you an idea of what I'm thinking. Um, so in a previous video I believe I talked about um, so this is a freezer acts as storage for stuff <laughs> and then um, if you can see the layout currently runs behind here um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take these shelves out and uh, remove this whole this whole shelving unit and at least cut it down to the um, to this shelf here and then uh, leave the shelves underneath for storage and then uh, I'm going to move this freezer to another part of the basement and then uh, this part here I'm going to add probably like a 24 to 30 inch shelf uh, coming out and then uh, I'm working on the track plan now for either a yard of some kind or uh, possibly some more industries um, I love switching, but I also, have, as I've complained in previous videos, I've really wanted um, a yard. So I, I've got to decide what's going to look best. I might just have like a transfer yard, something small where I can throw some cars, say the mainline trains, dump them off, um, and then the locals come and pick them up. So I've also contemplated in this area here. Uh, actually adding a curved switch coming off of here that would start the tr yard lead uh, a little bit earlier than if I started it on the straightaway which I'd probably have to start here and I want to start it right on the the end of a curve 
so I'd actually have to start it back here and I'm losing a good you know two feet here so if I started back here with a curved switch it would actually allow me to bring the yard lead out so I've got to come play around with that as I've mentioned in previous videos I hand laid all the switches uh, using the fast tracks kit uh, I'd like to do the same in that especially because uh, I, I looked up uh, some of the more common sizes for Walther's and um, microengineering track and I don't uh, the switch radius there doesn't match anything so I'd have to either redo the the curve on that um, uh, the uh, radius on that curve blank in there um, or um, I, I'm going to give hand laying a try. There was a video on model railroad hobbyist, or was it an article? Article or video? One of the two, about how to hand lay a switch, and it actually included, you know, laying down a sheet of paper, rubbing over the top of it, then moving it, and then that's that's your switch. So it doesn't. I was thinking we'll try that. So future video, um, definitely not this one just yet. Got to get the expansion in before we start that. So. All right, let's switch over to the, the workbench and we'll do some static grass tufts. Okay, so as always, uh, well, I shouldn't say as always, um, <laughs> the way this works is I'm just going to go ahead and apply some, some wood glue, uh, like always, and um, onto a old cookie sheet. And as you can see, the Teflon's really kind of started to come off on this one, so my wife didn't mind that I used this. Um, it it doesn't seem to matter. Uh, I've made several, and even on the areas that the uh, the Teflon's been removed, the Teflon isn't important. The wood glue won't stick to the uh, the metal no matter what. Uh, it's just it's not made to do that, so it doesn't adhere real well. But that's the beauty of it. Um, so what you want to start by doing, and I lost the uh, the tip of my wood glue container broke off, so now I've got. This is not the way I want it to work, but kind of making do here. So I'm just making a complete mess. <laughs> so if you just spread out some areas of wood glue, and, and you know, the, I guess uh, the, the advantage of, of making a mess here is the important thing is. Um, you can cut these once they're dry um, with the uh, just a pair of scissors or an exacto uh, blade. But essentially, what you're looking to do is just make clumps of of grass uh, glue, and then you'll come back with the static grass applicator and uh, apply the the static grass to them. Okay, so you want um, what I was trying to go for was more of of these smaller ones, but missing the tip of my uh, wood glue. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm not getting what I was hoping for. Um, however, not the end of the world. Um, like I said, they can always be cut uh, in the end. So, so once you've got a little bit of wood glue down, and normally what I do is I go through and I, I just do spots of them, you know, several dozen, um, various sizes. You know, sometimes I'll get bigger clumps, usually not this big. That, that's a little bit too big. Anywhere where you put glue is obviously going to, be stick so all right uh, take the uh, clip connect it to the cookie sheet turn on our static grass applicator and the great thing is is you get a great charge between the uh, because the cookie sheet is metal you get a great static charge between the two of them you also get a lot of waste um, it, well sort of waste. You get uh, some excess coming off. Obviously you can see there's a lot of, of stuff, but the beauty is, is once all this dries uh, you can come back and just reclaim it. Okay, so that's it. I mean that's the basic process. Um, I don't know if it'll show up in here or not, um, but you can see the static grass stands up quite nicely. Um, and so once these dry you can come back with an exacto knife and just start to pry up and, and if like say this larger one was to crack uh, no big deal um, you know you're just looking for a tuft of grass um, 
but again, because it's wood glue, it, it won't really stick to the, the metal. Uh, so it, as you start to pry under it, the whole thing will just eventually just pop off as one piece. And since we've got a cookie sheet and it's kind of like a cooking show, I actually have some tufts that I completed in the past. Um, so here they are. Let's see if I can get them in focus here. Um, and they just, I mean, that's basically it. Um, I don't know if it's focusing in here or not. I hope it is. Uh, and then here's a slightly larger one that I made. And then you can just apply these in an area of ground foam, sprinkle a little extra ground foam around them um, to hide the edges, uh, things like that. But, uh, you know, so there you go. They're just uh, tufts of grass. So I don't know if this is uh, helpful or not, but. Uh, one, uh, one small piece of advice, if you do uh, go this route, make sure the glue dries fully before you go and try lifting them off. If the center is still wet, what you'll, what'll happen is they'll start to curl on you, and then you'll just get, you know, they'll become un, kind of unusable because once, um, once the glue is dry, it is a little bit brittle, uh, so you can't, if you push too hard on them, they're just gonna crack and break. Uh, which can make for some nice shapes and everything, um, but not necessarily what you're looking to do. Okay, since I'm a little short on uh, footage for the week, I thought I'd just do a little bit of a roster of what I've got uh, running on the layout. Um, Modeling Wisconsin Central, uh, I'm a little limited in terms of what's all out there, and so a lot of times what happens is I've got to go ahead and, and repaint um, and either go with undecorated or strip and then uh, paint my own. Um, so for instance, this is a Proto 2000 SD45. Uh, started life as an undecorated unit and I went ahead and gave it a coat of uh, Wisconsin Central Maroon and then uh, these are micro scale decals. And then I added uh, small things like uh, the lift rings, uh, sunshades, um, metal grab irons, on all, all sides and then um, it's also got the uh, correct um, snow plow on the front and um, MU cables and things like that so this is a a rebuilt uh, version when Wisconsin Central first got their SD45s from various railroads uh, Burlington Northern, uh, Santa Fe, uh, Great Northern um, oh actually those came through Burlington Northern um, they were 20 cylinder uh, units and the 20 cylinder engines were um, a little hard on and they Wisconsin Central started to rebuild them to back to a 16 cylinder and when they rebuilt them uh, they renumbered them to the 7000 series instead of uh, a 6000 series so there's actually some 6000 series engines floating around on the layout and then some 7000 as well so here's an example of an Athern SD45, uh, factory painted, uh, so you can kind of tell the, the lettering is slightly different than the uh, micro scale. It's a little bit uh, wider, um, it's a little less prototypical, it actually was a little bit taller. Um, the micro scale decals are actually closer to, to reality, but uh, what are you going to do? Um, this one came factory with um, the uh, antenna setup here, um, as well as uh, I actually added the um, winterization, uh, or not winterization, but the, uh, um, I'm blanking on the name of it. Why am I blanking on the name of it? The three window, all weather window. Um, and then uh, this one also has uh, factory grab irons, lift rings, um, uh, lift rings up in the top here. And then I weathered it up, and uh, otherwise it's it's pretty much uh, out of the box. But it's uh, a great runner. It's uh, in their um, ready to run series of of engines. So if you have a chance to pick one of these up, I highly recommend them. They it's been a great runner with all the other units. As I've mentioned in previous videos, uh, one of the great things about Wisconsin Central is they had a lot of run-through power. They interchanged uh, in Chicago uh, with quite a few Class 1s. 
And so ultimately, sometimes that power would make its way onto the Wisconsin Central, even into Wisconsin. Um, so um, I, I'm a fan of almost every railroad out there. I, I really don't have any. I have some favorites, but I really don't have any that I dislike. But one thing I do love is Norfolk Southern and their um, catfish whiskers on the front. Um, just the black engines, just, I don't know, they look muscular for some reason. And one of the first engines I bought uh, with my own money when I was a kid was a Bachman 8-40C. It was in their Spectrum line. And no, that's not what this one is. This is actually the Atlas version in their, in their Gold series. Um, I, when this came out, I had to have one. And it fits with the railroad. Um, I actually have pictures of this particular engine um, running with Wisconsin Central units. So I can, I can say that it fits as part of the layout. Okay, so this beast of a, of a unit is a lifelike Proto 2000 SD60. Um, like every Proto engine, this thing weighs a ton. And it can also pull a ton, which is, which is great. Um, this unit technically is correct for the era. However, it does have a um, air conditioning unit on the top. Now, this I bought this unit off of HO Interchange Group, and I I can't. It's it's just so well done. Um, it actually has fully functioning ditch lights on both sides, uh, independently wired, fully functioning headlights, and a lot of extra details added throughout. And I couldn't bring myself to take them off, so I kind of just ignore the fact that some of these details weren't added until after Wisconsin Central was was uh, bought up by Canadian National, uh, beyond my era of modeling. But, however, it's still one of my favorites. Uh, like I said, it pulls like nobody's business, so. Another run-through power engine here. Uh, this one, actually, the story behind this one, I bought it with the intention of buying <coughs> one of the Caslo, um, or Caslo, um, resin cabs and turning this into a Canadian national uh, unit and when I got it um, as I've said in previous videos I'm very partial to Can or Chicago and Northwestern um, and when I got it I couldn't bring myself to strip the paint off and while though this isn't the traditional um, paint scheme for Chicago Northwestern it's still you know one of my favorites so I ended up going ahead and I used a decal set from um, Microscale and I added the builder's plates and uh, a lot of the warning symbols. I uh, painted the handrails um, and uh, grab irons, <clears throat> things like that. This is fully functioning ditch lights on the front and um, yeah, so it operates as run through power for me. Um, and again, it's, uh, it's a unit that I've seen pictures of running with Wisconsin Central engines. So. It uh, fits the era, and, and like I said, I'm, I'm a fan of Chicago Northwestern as well, so I had to keep it. <clears throat> so this is an Atlas Master Series GP40-2W, and it's got the, uh, the Canadian uh, wide cab or safety cab. Uh, and this was actually, the wide cab uh, was before all the American, or the U.S. railroads started to adopt it. Um, and I picked this up at uh, Train Fest one year. I uh, got it for a pretty good deal. This actually has a sound unit, and it has uh, quite possibly one of the smoothest running engines that I have uh, between the um, decoder and the motor itself. Um, it's by far one of my favorite. Uh, it's got the shields over the intakes for the snow shields. Um, it's got uh, piping up along here and um, all the grab irons and everything, working ditch lights, um, the whole nine yards. So I weathered it up. I, I actually struggled with taking an uh, airbrush and weathering this, uh, so I tried to go light on it, um, but just, you know, uh, dust it up a little bit. So, one of my, again, one of my favorite units, and, and Canadian National definitely was a run through power for Wisconsin Central. Uh, ultimately, you know, before they bought them, uh, they had a vested interest in in working with Wisconsin Central on a lot of things. So it was not uncommon to see uh, Canadian National Power on Wisconsin Central. So here's another four axle unit. This is actually a Atlas um, 
red box kind of prior to them going to their master series uh, and silver series <coughs> this is a red box it's a u23b and uh, if you look it up um, however this uh, this particular engine never got the YN2 paint scheme as you can see here um, I went ahead and I, I really like the YN2 paint scheme for CSX and uh, so I went ahead and, and just custom painted this one and I purposely kept the numbering uh, so that way I didn't have to redo the number board so a uh, little little cutting corners there or creative modeling um, didn't do too much more to it just a decal set from uh, microscale added the warning labels and uh, painted the handrails and, and things like that no ditch lights or anything on this one uh, get around to that someday uh, but for now uh, it you know it, this is it for now when Wisconsin Central first started uh, they were buying up power from pretty much everywhere and uh, they got a lot of engines uh, from Sioux Line and Sioux had quite a few GP30s on their roster and were happy to get rid of them and Wisconsin Central bought them up they didn't see much time uh, when they first when the railroad first started and they were power short uh, Wisconsin Central did keep these on the roster and some of them did get repainted into the maroon and, and gold of Wisconsin Central. Um, Mo Proto 2000 uh, did several factory paint schemes however I wanted to do um, more of a unique version so this started life as an undecorated unit and uh, I went ahead and, and moved the um, horn uh, from the top of the cab down to the bottom uh, the firecracker antenna and added the all-weather window and then uh, this model number the road number is actually prototypical to this particular unit uh, it was one of the few GP30s that Wisconsin Central did repaint and it was one of the few GP30s that maintain was numbered in the 2000 series most of the GP30s were actually in the 700 series um, so that makes this model somewhat unique. I don't run this uh, locomotive a lot though. Uh, unfortunately this one suffers from the cracked axle syndrome of early Proto 2000 units. I've repaired them but um, he's more of a showpiece than anything at this point. Okay so this is an SP45. Uh, it's an Ethern Genesis. It's actually one of the first Ethern Genesis engines I ever bought. So it has full sound and um, the full cowl unit. Um, Wisconsin Central brought several of these uh, from Santa Fe and um, so originally this unit, uh, I'd have to look this one up, but uh, some of these units carried the red and silver war bonnet and then were repainted to Wisconsin Central. And you can also see that it was a, it carried a slightly different paint scheme with the zigzag uh, and they did that obviously because of the cab situation and the full cowl on it. Uh, this unit is, is a great runner. This uh, engine sounds great and it's a great puller, nice heavy unit. A lot of great factory installed details. As you can see another one with the uh, antenna apparatus up top, um, the all-weather cab, um, and then uh, just all the wire screens on the, on the fans, um, wire grab irons and things like that. So just a great overall unit. Okay, so this is an Athern SD45-2, and the distinction between the 45 and the 45-2, and the easy spotting feature in my mind, well aside from the radiator flares not being there, the fan spacing is also much greater on the dash 2, um, so one of the easy ways to spot these. Uh, one of my other, uh, one of my favorite railroads, simply because I feel like Montana Rail Link is, is Wisconsin Central's um, spiritual brother if you will. Um, they're still going strong today. They've been around since I believe, uh, well I, I believe since the 80s at least if not longer. Um, and uh, just I, I, I think their paint scheme is really sharp. Uh, the dark blue and black it's just it's uh, they just again they like the Norfolk Southern engines they look like they're ready to pull a mountain and uh, and then obviously the country that they run in is rugged and, and uh, and tough to begin with. Um, so this uh, unit actually started life as a seaboard system which I stripped and went ahead and renumbered and repainted uh, for a the number 310 for Montana Rail Link. Uh, technically it's a little bit of a foobie into itself because it should have a new the newer logo on it. 
Um, however, it's uh, yeah, close enough from for my taste. Um, but uh, and again, this one isn't technically run through power necessarily. I don't know that uh, Montana Rail Link engines ever made it to the Wisconsin Central. However, I'm I'm giving it a a little bit of a, a leeway and saying that it did. So this unit is uh, an SD35 from Atlas from their uh, Master Series. And Wisconsin Central only fielded one SD35, and this is it. So it was numbered in the, uh, well, it was the only one numbered in the 2500 series. And uh, it's uh, one of a kind, and Atlas was kind enough to to factory paint one. So I actually haven't done much to this one. Uh, a little bit of weathering uh, down at the bottom, but everything is all factory installed, including the all-weather cab uh, window and grab irons and and all that stuff is all all factory so a great puller um, what I would love to do is is give this one one of its brothers in the uh, SD 39 L I believe it is um, those have to be custom made from the ground up though and I haven't uh, I haven't braved that yet but uh, so for now the, the SD 35 is the unique engine on the layout Okay, last but not least, I don't want to bore everyone and lose all my viewers just because I went through a roster video. Uh, so this video, or this uh, particular engine started life as an SD45 uh, Akato um, engine. And it started as an unnumbered. And an, uh, fortunately, unfortunately, you can see, I don't know if it'll show up in the video, but the, uh, the red of their Wisconsin Central is a little bit more red than the numbers of the um, microscale decal set. Um, but when it's running and with the weathering, it, it's a little bit harder to see. Um, I also added a, a three-window all-weather window and a firecracker antenna, installed all the grab irons, um, lift rings, of course. And then I went ahead and actually used, um, and I cut out the stairs, um, the steps rather, and then put in brass etched um, stairs. And that's not going to show up in the video, but um, they're actually see-through. I've also added uh, ditch lights to this unit, um, and then uh, of course gra or, um, uh, MU cables, uh, put the uh, numbering on the front and on the back, and uh, so overall this one isn't a complete custom unit, but it did receive a little bit of extra detailing. So. Well, that's the video for this week everyone. Um, sorry I don't have a little bit more of a how-to. Uh, like I said, between the, the holiday and, and the kids having off from school. Plus it's actually starting to get a little bit nicer out and uh, to be honest, I'm getting really tired of riding my bike on a trainer in the basement so I've been going outside braving the cold temperatures a little bit more. My race season starts soon so uh, I'm going to do as much as I can to continue these videos uh, hopefully once a week. Um, However, there may be a slight delay, or it might be 10 days, it might be two weeks in between videos, uh, simply because um, i got to keep everyone happy and uh, throwing in the race season in there. Uh, that becomes my focus from April until July time frame. So uh, if the video, um, hopefully the quality stays up <laughs> or increases, if you don't find the quality of the videos that good, um, hopefully the quality increases. Uh, but if nothing else, the, the quantity may go down slightly. Um, once the racing season's over, uh, then hopefully we'll go back up to a normal schedule. But just a forewarning, uh, please stick with me. Don't cancel your subscription with me. I'm going to hopefully continue to keep doing videos as often as I can. Uh, just a forewarning. Uh, bike season is coming. I've got to balance that now a little bit with everything else. So thanks a lot for watching. Um, hopefully it was a fun tour of the, some of the engines that I have on the layout. And that wasn't all of them, but I didn't want to give you a, a three hour tour of every single engine I have um, and the history and the story behind every single one of them. So, uh, and hopefully you find the grass tufts uh, useful, uh, small tip for the week. So that's it for this week's video. Uh, hope to see you next time.